Yum, yum. Hello, Pascal here. I see regularly on the forum someone asking how to create a reflection catcher in Modo. So I thought I would show you how I do it. So of course we can get easily a shadow catcher. There's a preset for that that's very simple to use. Although there's something to watch for that I'm going to show you how to deal with. So I have this little guy here and I have this ground plane and I want to export my scene so I have a separate reflection, sh separate shadow and of course the character. So I'm going to show you the process with a still image but it applies of course with uh, animation. So I'll go to my render layout and I'm going to set up things the way I like. So first the ground, the reflection amount it's up to you. I put it at like a total mirror scene. Maybe I'll lower the blurriness so I have more definition and you'll see why later. So I want to catch the, this. So I'm going to need, I'm going to pause this for a second. I'm going to need a shader, special shader. I'm going to put one also in my uh, robot group and I'm going to make sure it's set up for, my, for the whole hierarchy here. So I'm going to add a shader also. So for the ground, I need two render outputs. I need a render output shading, a reflection shading. which you see here, so it gets me the just the reflections. And I also need another render output, which is in lighting, which is the reflection occlusion. And that layer, that, that output is going to basically create a mask for the, for the reflection. So see, you have your this is what you're going to end up with and you can easily see how you can mask reflection output with reflection occlusion. What you have to watch for is that this is an occlusion output so to get very smooth uh, result you're going to have to really crank up the entire aliasing and uh, the shading rate to get really something nice and it's going to be costly in terms of render time. So what I do is that I just leave it the way it is with the very basic settings and I blur it a tiny bit in uh, After Effects or Photoshop and it's a pretty decent result, especially for animation. For a still image, you may just want to just let it cook, put, it, put the render output in full resolution, render all outputs and just let it cook for a while and once you have it uh, clean then just export it and use it. So I want to separate all those outputs. Of course you can export just render the image and export the outputs and then you're done but let's be a little more sophisticated. So I want to add here another layer and it's going to be an alpha layer and I'm going to call it shadows and turn it off for now. So what I want to do is set up render passes so I have my robot, my ground, the shadow and the reflection. So for the robot I also need an alpha output for the whole group. And I call it Alpha Robot Alpha, it's like an airplane. And I really don't need this one. So now I can start setting up my passes. So I'll create a new group. I call it Passes and it's empty and I need a new 
pass first, and we call this reflections. Okay. I'm going to click on auto add, and what I want is that I want the robot here to be not visible to camera. Oh, but <laughs> I should put this on top of the main shader, all right, otherwise it doesn't do anything interesting. All right, so not visible to camera. I want the ground, and I want the cast shadow. I don't want to receive shadows. And I don't need this alpha here. So I think we're good. I'll get only these two outputs. These four, I mean, final color is good, but the surface ID and colored were all the outputs are deleted and they're still showing in the preview window for some reason. But if I do a, a render now, you see how we get the outputs I selected. So I don't need this, and actually I don't need the final color output for my uh, reflection here. So I hit apply. So we're good now. So now if I go back to none, I have uh, all the outputs the way they were before. Now I need another pass for the robot. Okay, robot alone. And now I want this to be as it is, but the ground is not visible to camera. And I don't need to cast uh, shadows. And I want the alpha to be on, and I want these two to be off. Okay. So this is my robot. This is my these are my reflections. And this is nothing, so everything together. Okay. Now I could if I wanted uh let's create a new pass and I call this shadow. Z. I'll show you the problem there is with the the shadow catcher. So if I wanted to create a shadow catcher and just have it in the scene, I could just activate this, deactivate those two, and change the shader here from alpha to shadow catcher. The problem though, as you can see, is that the shadow catcher is one way, so it catches the shadow going down, but then here I have an HDR lighting the scene, and it lets this light in from under, as if the ground is transparent. So you don't want to render the robot with the shadow catcher. You really want to have a separate pass for it. So we're going to, for this pass, we're going to make the robot invisible to camera. Turn on the shadows here. Shader is shadow catcher. And we also want the material 
to be 0% specular and 0% Fresnel. So we just have the shadow here. I forgot to put auto add there. So now these are shadow paths. which is going to mask the final color output and just have the shadows. So now we're all ready and we can render the various passes. So you go to render, render passes. This is my pass group. And it's going to render the, all the passes separately. So render is over. I have all my passes here. I'm going to save them separately. Not as an image, but as a layered image. EXR. So these are my, this is my shadows. Robot. and reflections. All right, so now we can hop over to After Effects. So we are here in After Effects. I've imported my three renders here. I'm going to go to the project settings, make sure we are on 16 bits per channel, and assign sRGB working space linearize. So we are good with the colors. Then select the three files, go to file, and I go, I'm going to use a plugin called Pro EXR, which is a free plugin now that you should definitely have. It used to be paying, but now it's free, so why not use it? I'll put uh, the link in the description. So what it does is creates comps with all the passes and a contact sheet with the, that you, so you can see what you have inside your file. So this is the one we want, reflection assemble. We don't need the description. And this is the one, this is the pass we're going to use for to mask the reflection shading. So we need to, this is the end of the ground plane here. So we need to mask this also. So I'm gonna add a new solid. Black is good. Put it under and I'm gonna mask it like this. Okay, so now I can put it above the reflection shading and use alpha inverted to have my reflection. Now the shadows. Let's get rid of this. I'm going to put my alpha above my RGB and use alpha mate to get my shadows here. And finally the robot. Same thing, I take my alpha, put it above my RGB, trick mate, alpha mate, and I have my alpha. So I'm gonna add any solid for the background. Take a nice blue, there we go. Put it under background, and I can add the reflections and the shadows above the reflections. So I want this one to be on multiply, 
And this one you can play with the fusion modes, but I find it's as well to keep it normal and just play with the transparency. And you can also, you may want to, let's open this reflection here, click on the window and go view, new, view, new viewer. So this creates a new viewer for this that's locked for this composition. Go back to my robot here. Let's lock it as well. Go to reflections and here we can play with the I'm going to add some levels. You can play with the settings here to your liking. Ah, but I see a mistake here. See that little fringe around the robot? That's because I forgot to check off something in my model scene. I'll show you what it is. So here's an extra tip for you. I have a in my default scene, I have an environment that's only visible to camera. But if you render isolated objects, you don't want any environment. So I need to, in my robot pass, I need to turn this off so it renders on black. And I want to make sure that in my final color output, I have unpremultiply checked. So now I can re-render the pass and uh, go back to After Effects and uh, it's updated and I have a clean alpha. Now for the reflection, as you can see it's a little grainy but it's nothing very bad. I mean the reflection is not too blurry. The blurrier you get, the more grain you're going to get. But to me it's not a big deal if you add a... Uh, you can add a slight blur to the reflections. like two or three pixels and you have something very clean. So here's how to have a reflection catcher inside Modo. Hope this would be useful. Bye.